What's up guys, Chris here from Mainly Mesh. Really excited about this video today. Gonna be addressing the question, what is quote, hold, uh, draw, drag, um, catch, whip, what do you wanna call it, or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, gonna be d talking about a lot of stuff today and I think it's gonna be a really helpful video for you guys stringing your sticks. So first we're gonna start with some physics for you. So I'm gonna nerd up and uh, first we're gonna discuss uh, friction <laughs> but if any of you guys have taken I mean this is basic high school level physics even even some middle school stuff um, when you're talking about friction friction is what makes it difficult for things to slide around basically so as everybody knows if they've ever touched ice ice has low friction because you can slide on it you see ice hockey players that's actually a different story because they're gliding on a thin layer of water which if you ever watch a slow-mo video it's a real mind blow anyways um, but a puck slides around on ice better than it would on grass because grass has more friction. And, and I'm sure even if you haven't had that level of physics for you young guys, um, you at least have heard the word before and it, it'll, uh, it'll make some sense. But um, when talking about hold, there's what people don't always think about is, is there's two different types of friction when you're speaking physically. There's static friction and kinetic friction and what that means in layman's terms is so static friction is that is how much force it takes to get an object moving and we're not talking inertia here if for the super nerds who are like well isn't that just inertia well if something is planted on the ground imagine if anybody's pushed around a table or or a refrigerator is even a better example and you know how you need you need to give a little extra hard push to get it going and then once it's going then it slides a little more easily and the reason that is um, is because there's a higher higher level of or a higher coefficient of static friction compared to kinetic friction what kinetic friction is is the force being applied in the opposite direction of the force you're applying so pause I'm pushing this way I mean kinetic friction is just the force that's making it harder for me to push something so as I'm pushing that refrigerator along kinetic fr friction is pushing back that way and making it harder for me to push the reason it feels like you have to put more of a force into it to get it going is because you do have to put more of a force into it to get it going and that's what static friction is is there's a difference between an object imagine pause imagine again you have a grooved surface okay so you've got ridges like this and we have matching ridges meshing okay as you can imagine if you were trying to push my hand out of this groove it would take a little extra force but once I'm out of the groove now you can move more easily across the surface that's the physics of it probably didn't explain that the best but now we're gonna talk about it in terms of mesh so in terms of what a lot of pockets have pockets with low hold means that they have neither a high coefficient of static static friction friction or um, or a high coefficient of kinetic friction and shoot there's my yellow ball so here's an example of a pocket that I strung that doesn't have any hold. <laughs> it's not a very high hold pocket. Um, I need to restring it, frankly. This is an OG Revo, what a lot of you guys are used to. I mean, this thing looks like it has a pretty decent channel, right? But if you do the good old hold test, which I will talk about later, you see the ball rolls right on out, just nice and smooth. You don't see it catching. You don't see it dragging. There's nothing there. There's nothing there to slow it down. And the reason that that is is because if you look, if you guys have seen my Goldilocks video theory, there's nothing really. I mean, it's hugging it, hugging the ball, the sides of the ball here, the meshes. But as it goes forward, the channel kind of widens out, and it it really is just allowed to roll. And the shooting strings aren't holding it back or anything. Now. If you guys haven't seen the Goldilocks video um, theory video, I would suggest you pause this video now and go and watch that and then come back. But 
what the Goldilocks video talks about is how you want the sides of the mesh to hug the ball to get the most hold. That's not necessarily entirely true. And why that isn't true is because if you hug the sides, and the reason, pause again, the reason I'm not a fan of more tacky waxed mesh is because, as you can easily understand, if something's really sticky, it's going to have catch. And what that means is, as you know, it, the ball's going to get stuck if you string too tight of a channel. Um, and so here's an example of another head. Looks awesome. Here's a nice bolt torque. Looks like it'd be perfect, right? But as you can see, it gets caught. And if I tip it like this, it's really being caught. And a lot of people would take that as, oh, look, awesome hold. But flashback to our physics lesson just now. What that means is that this has a high coefficient of static friction, meaning that it's going to take a lot of force to get the ball from here out of the stick. This is this is a slippery ball, mind you. This is this has no grip on it and I can get it stuck vertically. And that's not what you want. That's going to that's going to cause quote whipping into the ground when you feel that catching feeling in your stick. Um, that's because all of a sudden there's a huge discrepancy between between the coefficient of static friction and the coefficient of kinetic friction. Pause again. What I mean by that as well, so if we want to take this to an extreme, you have a very, very tacky, waxy mesh, almost glue-like. Take it to a further extreme. If I take a brick and I super glue it to this wall, I can't really show you, but I super glue it to a wall, it's going to be really hard to drag that brick down the wall, right? I mean, that's just common sense. Now, say it takes two tons, it takes a car tied to that brick to rip it off the wall and drag down. That's a huge coefficient of static friction. That's a huge amount of force that you have to put in just to get it moving. Once you rip it off the wall, now it's just, I mean, it might as well be dragging it across sandpaper. That thing's going to fly because it's got a car attached to it. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know, the, the brick is just, it's going to be like the wall wasn't even there. And so that's, that's the extreme of having an incredibly high coefficient of static friction compared to an incredibly low coefficient of kinetic friction. What we want is to, to get maximum hold, the key is to increase, slowly increase the level of kinetic friction, being wary of not having a high coefficient of static friction. So if anything, you want those to be almost the same. And so I'll give you an example. So here, here's that the NAS that I used for the Goldilocks theory video. High channel. But as you notice, the mesh hugs the side of the ball all the way through the channel. But if you watch, I do that little hold test it rolls out just like the Revo did for the most part with just a little bit more hold and so what that means is that there's a very low coefficient of static friction and so the reason I only use this nylon up top and a shooting string is if if I put a third shooter in here if you notice where it starts to want to catch if you put a third shooter right here right here or even a fourth one right there, then that shooter could all of a sudden increase the level of stat or the coefficient of static friction, and then it throws it into the ground. And as I've tried it, you know, when I put in a third shooting string on this, it throws into the ground. It catches. So when I when I try to maximize my channels, I'm trying to get as few shooting strings in, as there in there as possible. This this is just the only thing. That these shooters are affecting are the release point. I, I ha you have to have a hard nylon here for this pocket and this head with this mesh because otherwise it slides out too easily and you sky your shots. So the nylon adds a little control and then the shooting string just adds a little a little more drag, a little more um, a little more soft release. Um, compare that to a 
another head with um, a very sparse shooter setup. Little OG jet. <laughs> Fun one. So, oh, yo, same channel. Looks really good, right? Well, notice how that gets caught right there. And so, as I'm trying to roll it out, oh, stuck, 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 almost vertical, now it's out. That's your static friction. This is going to have whip. Okay, this is going to throw into the ground. And that whip, that catch, um, that's a higher coefficient of static friction. So, when you're talking about wax meshes, so all of those examples were all string king mesh. Here's the Under Armour Juke that I did the throne mesh review with. Same Goldilocks theory for the channel. So if you're applying the Goldilocks theory to wax meshes, you wouldn't want a very tacky mesh because a tacky mesh that's gripping the side of the ball increases your static friction, also increases your, your kinetic friction, and so it's going to take a long time to get out of the head. It's going to whip. So if anything, sometimes with wax meshes, what I do is I string less of a channel and throw in a tighter shooter setup like this because I want the ball riding on the shooting strings, not the mesh. I don't want the hold to be coming from that tackiness. If I was stringing a super tacky, tacky mesh, I wouldn't want to string a maximized Goldilocks channel because because the ball would be rubbing on all this stickiness the entire way out. And if, if it got above 70 degrees, it'd be screwed. It'd throw straight into the ground. Is that a pitch for thrown mesh over other things? Possibly. You know, like I said yesterday, Burry Mesh is doing any, – any, any, there's a lot of guys doing non-tacky mesh. Um, and that's my preference. And you can totally get a very high-performing pocket out of um, tackier wax meshes. You just have to think about it a little differently. You can't use that Goldilocks theory for hold. You have to incorporate the shooting strings a little more. And, I mean, my opinion is why not make your life easier and just get rid of some, some shooting strings to increase your hold. Um, finally, you know, how, how do the shooting, like, are, are, am I saying get rid of shooting strings? Does that mean that all of a sudden the best shooting shooter setup is this? Not necessarily because what this doesn't do obviously is it's it's hard to get that that next level, you know, that little extra bit of, of whip. Um, and I'm talking whip in terms of how low it throws, how far you can reach back your hands for a shot. Um, it's hard to get that with this type of pocket. This is just a lower whip. I mean, you can still crank with this, but but you're not going to shoot 114 miles an hour with this. If you gave that guy this head, he'd shoot 105. You know, it might be that difference um, when you're talking about that level of strength. So, um, a little example of what I've been playing a lot with now is this setup, and this is a nylon and five shoot and four shooting strings. And what this allows you to do, and keeping the straights, so as you can imagine, again, if you have these and U's, it's going to hug the side of the ball. Sometimes it can catch. That increases your level of static friction. I mean, this, this sounds repetitive, but, I mean, it's stuff that hasn't necessarily been put out there. So, so this doesn't necessarily have that crazy defined channel. I mean, look, there's, compared to, I mean, literally side-by-side -side comparison, there's a huge difference there. This doesn't have as much channel. But the way you can control your whip is as the ball is sliding up and giving, a lot of times actually it holds right here. Actually, I don't I don't really know how to best explain this yet. I should probably <laughs> take a little more time to think this through. Um, but um, in adding these five strings, you can you can change the amount of give in the in the mesh at each one of these points so it's it's almost um, getting more of a feel of a traditional <laughs> because you're not just relying on the mesh you're controlling the um, the give at each one of these locations I, I just said that twice but that's what I mean um, so it just provides you a little bit more control in terms of tweak tweaking whip um, I have to think a little bit more as to um, how
how to perfect the NCAA legal pocket for those guys who want a little more whip. I mean, that's just that's one of my weaknesses right now in terms of stringing. Um, boy, oh boy, that was a lot. This is a 15 minute video so far, um, but um, that's that's the basics of of what hold is is it's a level of friction um, that gosh I'm 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 spent <laughs> you the, the overall goal is you want to bring your level of kinetic friction up as much as you'd like hold to be bring the level of static coefficient down so you can have a consistent pocket easy ways to bring that level of uh, static friction down is get rid of tackiness you know um, uh, any anything that's sticky any U's or V's um, that's what that's what adds catch I mean you if you guys have strung a lot of pockets and then you probably figured it out by experience but but that's kind of some a bit of the science behind it and um, uh, I might I, I still think there's some things that I might have missed in this video but um, I, there's always more videos to be made so I hope you guys <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that um, please comment down below your responses I always always love to hear what you guys think about these things um, because there is always always room to learn um, and always progress to be made um, and it's I mean you know to think how far the game has come and how you know, personally my stringings have come in in a year uh, and to think, you know, what we might be looking at in a few years, uh, one, two, three, four, ten. Um, it's pretty wild. It's a fun sport that we play. <laughs> it's a good times to be had. So uh, until next time, get ready for spring. Enjoy life. Blah. See you next time. <laughs>